Hey everybody, Racky Ryan here. Today's video is for entertainment purposes only, but man, is this a good one. So stick around because you're not gonna wanna miss how I made the most ROI ever on one of my investments. The title is true. I did make a lot of money on a bankrupt company. I'm going to show you exactly how I did that, what company that was, and how you yourself can do this in the future. By the way, this is not a get rich quick video. In fact, these opportunities very rarely come about, but when they do, you wanna make sure to jump in on it because there is a huge amount of upside that you can make. If you are new to the channel, welcome. I am Racky Ryan. I am the guy who's always talking about stocks while wearing a hoodie. I started this channel to help you learn as much as possible about investing. I have 15 years of experience investing. I've seen pretty much everything and anything related to investing. I created this so that we could start a community of all different types of investors with all different types of experience so that we can learn from each other in order to make as much money as possible. My nickname is Racky because I love to make racks. Racks is money. And my favorite way to make racks is through the stock market. So if this is something that you would be interested in, make sure to smash that like button as well as subscribe for more future content. I mainly focus on value investing. I'm going to teach you the process of value investing. Do you know how to value a stock? If not, I will teach you. There's a lot of things that I feel like my channel will have to offer you. I'll show you exactly how I come up with all of my price targets, the way that I invest, and really my process for how I approach the stock market. Now it's time to talk about how I made a bunch of money on a bankrupt company, which company that was, how I did this, and my process for whenever I'm looking for other companies that are in a similar situation. Okay, so I've pulled up American Airlines stock chart. This is the company that I made a ton of money off of when it was going through bankruptcy. As you can see here in American Airlines chart, the stock was trading below a dollar. This is real, this actually did happen. So in 2012, the stock was trading around 52 cents, 45 cents, 54 cents, 50 cents, you know, 37 cents per share. And now you can see today that the stock is trading around $22 per share. So if you bought shares around 50 cents per share, you're looking at a 40x return on your money. I'm going to tell you exactly why I did this, how I found out about this, and how you yourself can do this in the future. So before I get into details about my American Airlines bankruptcy trade, it is very important for me to talk about the two different types of bankruptcy that companies go through. So the two main bankruptcies involving stocks that you'll often see is chapter seven and chapter 11. Okay, so chapter seven is basically the company is done. But chapter 11 means that the company is restructuring, it's reorganizing, and it still is trying to be a business. So I pulled up chapter seven versus chapter 11 bankruptcy on Google. It says, the biggest difference between chapter 11 and chapter seven is that chapter 11 is a reorganization bankruptcy while chapter seven is a liquidation bankruptcy. So if you file for chapter seven, you'll have to sell your assets to pay as many creditors as possible. And I know that might seem a little bit complicated, but I will leave links below to chapter seven bankruptcy as well as chapter 11 bankruptcy on Wikipedia so you can look for yourself. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen this before, but have you ever seen the companies that are like liquidation sale? You know, the furniture companies that are like, everything must go, we're selling this, we're selling that. Those companies are generally going through chapter seven bankruptcy. But there's another bankruptcy called chapter 11. And chapter 11 is saying, we need help from you creditors. We are still going to be a business, but we can't pay our current debts. If you work with us, if you work out a different schedule of fee payments, or if you cut some of these fee payments here, or if we're allowed to sell off some of these assets there, then we can continue as a business and if we continue as a business, we think that we can still make profits and then we will be able to pay back our debts in the future. So now when I made my trade on American Airlines, American Airlines was going through chapter 11 bankruptcy. They were going through reorganization bankruptcy. So how did I know what companies are going through chapter 11 bankruptcy? Well, this is actually something that I commonly look for, you know, maybe once a week, twice a week, maybe once a month. I'm always just checking this Wikipedia page because you can see that there are some huge companies that go through chapter 11 bankruptcy. For this, it basically shows all of the companies that filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy, meaning they filed for restructuring in their business. So you can see that there's huge companies and this is just in the year 2020. So we had 24 hour fitness, we had GNC, we had JCPenney. There was another large company called McDermott. You know, so there's a huge one here, Intelsat. However, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the opportunities to find a good company to buy stock in that's going through chapter 11 is very rare because at the end of the day, the company is going through bankruptcy. 
The company is saying, look, we don't have the ability to pay off our debts. And generally, that's not very a good thing. With the case with American Airlines, I knew that this was a huge airline company. I knew that the company had a ton of airplanes that had a lot of value so they could sell off part of their fleet. I also knew that the company had a lot of good routes. The company was a huge brand and really I thought that it was too big to fail. I didn't think that they were going to go through chapter seven. I thought they were going to go through chapter 11 and actually make it out of chapter 11 and continue to be American Airlines. So you can go through this Wikipedia page and you can see all the different companies that go through chapter 11 bankruptcy. So I remember when Sears went bankrupt, it was at like 20 cents a share. So let's say you bought it around 90 cents a dollar and now it's all the way back down to like 20 cents. So that wouldn't have been a good one. And so this isn't a for sure way of making money, but what it does have is an asymmetrical risk reward scenario. What I mean by that is you can invest $500, then your $500 is going to have a huge return on its investment. It can 10x, 20x, you know, turn into 5,000, 10,000, or you just have to assume that you're going to lose it all and that ends up being zero. And so what we can do is we can run a statistical analysis on the expected value of your trade. So let me show you exactly how I came up with my decision to invest into American Airlines. If you're not a numbers person, bear with me. So you take your initial investment, you have $500, okay? And so what we're gonna do is come up with different scenarios that we think is going to happen. So let's say we think there's a 5% chance that we're going to 5X our money. We think that American Airlines is going to survive chapter 11 bankruptcy and we're going to return five times our money. So if that happens, then we're going to take our initial investment, we're gonna end up with $2,500 and that's going to give us a $2,000 profit return. So what expected value is, is the value that we have to expect based on this scenario. So our expected value is 100 of this simulation. And we do this again, and we have a probability of 5%. We expect that we're going to return 10X on our initial investment. That'll give us a profit of 4,500. Our expected value is 225. The next scenario, let's say we're going to 20X our investment. So we're gonna start with 500. Our probability of this happening is only 5%. It's not very high. But if it does happen, then our profit is going to be $9,500. So under this scenario, our expected value is 475. Now let's talk about the scenarios where we either lose money or we lose entirely. We came up with the scenario that 45% of the time, we're going to lose half of our money. So we're gonna take $500 investment, we're gonna end up with $250 returned. We're gonna lose 50%. So our profit's gonna be negative $250. So our expected value on this scenario is negative $112. Now let's say 40% of the time we do this investment into a chapter 11 bankruptcy company and we think, well, we're gonna lose everything. And if we lose everything, then we're gonna have negative $500 profit. So the expected value of the trade of negative 500 is going to be negative 200. So now what we're going to do to get our expected value on this trade, assuming that we ran this trade a hundred times, we ran this trade a thousand times, we come across this situation a thousand times. What is the expected value? What is the expected ROI on our trade given these parameters? I know this is a lot of statistics stuff, but this is basically the point. If we ran this scenario a thousand times, our expected value is $687 on our $500 investment. So it is a profitable trade. So what you have to keep in mind is how asymmetrical this is, is that when you do hit it, when you are correct, the stock can return so much money on those few times that it outweighs the majority of times right here where you think you're going to lose money or you're gonna lose it all. 85% of the time, I'm assuming that this trade is not going to go well. 85% of the time, I'm assuming you're either going to lose 50% or you're going to lose all of your money. But in those other 5% times, the other 15% of the time, you're going to make either 5X, 10X, or 20X your money. So again, if we ran enough simulations, then this is a profitable trade. 
And so this is the way that my mind thinks, especially when it comes to these certain special situations like these chapter 11 bankruptcies. I expect to lose the majority of the time, but when and if I'm correct, I expect to make a lot of money. I know that you may be watching this and you might not have an, a statistics background and that's totally cool. But what I'm trying to show you is that this has an asymmetrical risk reward scenario and this is the way that my mind was thinking whenever I made this trade. So at the time when American Airlines was trading around 50 cents per share, I ended up putting in about $2,000 and bought about $2,000 worth of stock, which I think roughly gave me something like 7,000 shares of American Airlines. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull up an article to discuss what happened and the fallout for American Airlines when it went through bankruptcy. This is an article titled from 2014, Big Payday for Shareholders Who Stuck with the Old Bankrupt American Airlines. Shareholders who own stock in the old bankrupt American Airlines got a nice payday Monday. Fort Worth-based American Airlines Group, AAL, converted 41.9 million shares into common stock Monday based on the stock price of 33.8. Anyone who owns convertible preferred stock had 70.48% of the stock mandatorily converted to common stock. I did not own preferred stock. I owned common shares. So the way that American Airlines survived Chapter 11 bankruptcy is U.S. Airways basically came and saved the day. U.S. Airways was a very large airline company as well. But what did they do? They seized an opportunity. They saw that American Airlines was distressed and they said, look, we will merge with you so we can make a much larger company. We have a much better balance sheet, we're not in debt, but we do wanna merge because we think that we can create a much larger business, we can help you with your debt, and together we can build a huge, bigger and better American Airlines brand. Because US Airways was not as known as American Airlines. So as part of the deal, when American Airlines and US Airways merged, Holders of the old parent company AMR Corp's over-the-counter AAMRQ shares received 0.18 shares of the new AAL stock. So for every share that I owned when American Airlines was trading in the doldrums, in the complete dirt here in 2012, ended up being worth 0.18 shares of the new AAL stock. And at the time when the shares converted into AAL stock, the stock was trading at $33 per share. So my shares that I ended up buying for really, really cheap here ended up being worth $33 per share. However, I didn't keep as many shares as I originally had. For every share that I had, I only got 0.18 shares of the new AAL stock. So now I'm going to show you how the math on this played out so you can see how I ended up doing on this trade. Okay, so I know I put in about $2,000 and I ended up having like roughly 7,000 AAMRQ shares, which was the ticker symbol for when American Airlines was going through bankruptcy. So I'm gonna run the conversion to show you sort of how this trade played out. And the conversion was 0.18. So it gave us that many shares times 0.18. So that ended up giving me 1,241 shares. The return was equal to, it was trading at $33 per share, remember? 33 times this number. So it ended up being $40,000 and the profit was equal to this minus this. So like I said, it ended up being about a 20X trade where I put in 2,000 and ended up making about $38,000 in profit. And this is honestly the best trader investment I've ever had. So I just wanted to show you guys how I was able to hit a home run and make a bunch of money on a bankrupt company. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have a stock that you want me to take a look at, leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video today, make sure to smash that like button as well as subscribe. I appreciate you guys being here and I look forward to seeing you again in the future.